the topic of relationships has come up a couple times, uh, particularly people who are already in relationship. Um, and I'm wondering from, uh, for those of us who are single, about that dance that we dance, you know, as we're uh, discovering relationship or perhaps looking for a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, being single, there's, there's still, you could say that really everyone that you meet, and certainly we could talk about that here in Kwame, because <laughs> you meet a lot of people over and over and over at the Lanai and at different uh, gatherings and places. Um, the same mirroring that goes on uh, in relationships goes on, and in this world we could say there's definitions of what it means to be in a relationship versus being single. We also could make distinctions between something like um, a casual encounter and what seems to be a much more sustained relationship, whether it's a, a significant other relationship or a working relationship or family relationships and so forth. And there seems to be a great difference between casual encounters and lifelong relationships. I mean, they don't seem to be in the same ballpark, you know, they seem to be so different. And in the teacher's manual of the Course in Miracles, Jesus says, uh, there is no one that you cannot teach because there is, there is no one that you cannot learn from. In other words, we're teaching and learning about ourselves with every interaction, whether it's a sustained interaction or if it's just a casual encounter. Or even if we're just thinking about someone and they aren't even physically present uh, to us in proximity, we're still teaching and learning. There's a process going on in our consciousness and it's, it's all based on thought. And so, when we tend to think of teaching in the world, it's very much like teaching in terms of a, like having an instructor and having a pupil and so on and so forth. But, but the way that it's talked about in the Course is you're teaching all the time. And in fact, you're teaching the whole universe with everything you think and say and do. So you see, it's a much larger context for for teaching. I would say teaching is more uh, analogous to thinking. So, in terms of desiring a relationship, um, I think the, the purpose of all of this mind training and mind clearing is just to get more tuned in to, to guidance and that part of the plan of awakening is, is that there will be relationships that will come, there, you could call them relationships, you could call them assignments that are part of the plan. And the purpose of every relationship or every assignment is to maximize, the, is kind of to learn as much as you can or approach forgiveness, true forgiveness, as deeply as you can with that relationship. And it doesn't matter, even if it seems to be a casual encounter, uh, those casual encounters offer the same opportunity for forgiveness that the more sustained and lifelong relationships uh, offer as well. Um, in terms of, of a partner or a mate, I know um, there's been a lot of literature written on soulmates and so on and so forth. It's kind of interesting in the Teacher's Manual of the Course in Miracles because Jesus does describe casual encounters and then fairly intense teaching learning situations that are, that where they appear to separate after a period of time, that are more, we could say, short term or, or mid range ones, and then he describes lifelong partners. And he describes lifelong partners by saying they're very rare in this world and that the partners, so he kind of guns down the, the old romantic soulmate notion. And what he's really saying with that is, this is a 
this unconscious is very deep and very dark. And you may actually have an assignment, it's a lifelong assignment, and it's not all going to be peaches and cream. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of chunks of darkness that come up in this lifelong assignment. Uh, so, it's kind of good, I always feel like it's good to get it straight, you know, like, okay, if I'm, if I'm really in this for peace of mind and, and everlasting life, then I have to know that, that it's going to be a dark unconscious and I may have relationships that seem to be uh, longer lasting ones in which there's a lot of antagonism, a lot of things that come up. And that's where, you know, the value of commitment comes in because in order to really stand in there and face those, those thoughts and those beliefs that are coming up, there is a, a sense of having a commitment to hang in there with it. And when we talk about relationships, that's usually a very big centerpiece of relationships is the commitment. The ego doesn't even know what commitment means. It, it has no clue what commitment is. It's just, it's totally impulsive. It's kind of like a wild child, like in one of Enya's songs, she talks about the wild child. And so the spirit works with the mind in a successive, you might say, uh, successive kind of one after another run of, of, of commitment building uh, disciplines for the mind to approach the, the escape hatch, or you could call it salvation, or you could call it true liberation, true freedom, that there's going to be a successive number of experiences and commitments that will lead you towards the total commitment that's required for releasing the mind from this world. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's beautiful that uh, you can just be very open-minded and, and try to be as intuitive as possible because there will be assignments that will be coming and it's just important to be as tuned in as possible so that you so when those assignments come, you can really answer the call and say, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to, uh, to commit. There are also many other commitments, you know, when you talk about yoga or tai chi, martial arts. I mean, um, having a job, uh, being a volunteer at Kalani, you could go on and on. You know, there are many, many ways that the Spirit strengthens this awareness of commitment uh, for the mind and, and disciplines and relationships is just one of those. It's part of a broad spectrum.